In this video, we're going to create and apply watermarks using Adobe Lightroom. We're going to create text and graphic watermarks, so let's get started. Let's go up to Lightroom tab and go down to Edit Watermarks. Now, in this dialog, you have the option to create and edit pre-existing uh, pre watermarks. And right here, you'll see I have a sample of the image that I had selected, and it shows what the watermark will look when applied. Let's, for right now, create a simple text watermark. So watermark style, we're going to stick with text. We're going to ignore the image options because that doesn't apply to text watermarks. And we're going to go down here to our font. Now, I'm going to choose a font that I like. You are welcome to choose whatever you feel best represents you. I'm going to go down here and choose Futura. And I would like my font to be bold. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and all cap this. And I'm going to remove the copyright and just have my first and last. Now you have an alignment option, which if you only have one line of text, isn't really going to make any difference to you. However, if you had a second line, let's say you had the word photography underneath, now your alignment option will matter more. However, since I'm only doing one line of text, I'm just going to leave it default aligned left. My color, while it could be set to anything, and you have lots of options to choose colors from spectrums or to choose from palettes, I'm actually going to stick with white. I tend to like white because it's simple and because I use this watermark on a wide variety of images, if I were to choose a color, I risk clashing that color with something else that's in the image. So I stick with simple and white is pretty simple. So let's just go with white. Now we have options for shadow. And before we change those, I'm gonna grab this and just enlarge it. Cause you'll notice it's hard to see the shadow with the watermark so small. This image is pretty dark in most areas, but over the white shirt, you can see where the shadow is in its default setting. And I'm gonna tweak that just a little bit. So I do want a shadow, just in the event that this watermark falls on an image which has a pure white area, I want it to be legible, but I want the opacity of the shadow to be brought way down. So I'm gonna bring it down to uh, like 30. The offset is how far away from your text the shadow is going to fall. And for that, I'm gonna bring it all the way back to zero. And the reason for that is because if I have it offset a little bit, you'll notice I get a shadow underneath, but not at the top, which means if this were setting on a white field, you would only see the shadow falling towards the bottom and right or whatever your angle was set of your text. I want it to fall all around it, so I'm going to bring the offset all the way back. This is totally up to you, but I like it this way so that there is a shadow slightly around all of the text, top and bottom, left and right. The radius changes how hard or soft the edges of the shadow are. You'll notice if I change the offset a little bit and bring the radius down, you have a very hard edge shadow. But if I bring the radius up, you get a soft edge shadow. So what I'm gonna do is bring the offset down and crank the radius up and just get a slight soft edge shadow. Now, angle is only important if you have an offset. If you have an offset, then your angle will change what angle the shadow is falling at. But if you're not going to offset it, it really doesn't matter because the shadow is directly behind the text. I'm gonna go down further to the watermark effects, and here we can change the opacity of the overall watermark. And this is useful if you don't want your watermark to be too intrusive on your image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the opacity down into the 30s. And that way, it's still visible, but it just doesn't scream and overpower my actual image. Now, right now, it's huge. We're going to have to change that. But uh, ideally, it won't be as noticeable once I get it down to size. Now, on to size. So right now, by default, it's checked as proportional. And let me explain these settings. When you have a proportional watermark, it's going to be applied to every image proportionally, which is to say that if it looks about this size on this image, Lightroom's gonna to try to make it look about that size on all images, regardless of the pixel dimensions. And so you might have an image from an iPhone 
that it's applied to, or you might have an image from a very high pixel camera, and it's still going to look about the same size on images of this orientation. I prefer proportional, that way the watermarks look uniform over a wide range of images. But you also have the option to fit, and what that's going to do is expands the watermark to perfectly fit inside of your image while still being able to view the entire watermark. And then you have the option to fill. And fill is going to expand your watermark until it is as big as possible and fill the image. And this doesn't work out very well unless you have maybe like a square watermark. And in that case, you, you might get away with it or a watermark that is the same size as your picture. Otherwise, it's probably going to cut off some of your watermark. I'm going to go back to proportional and I'm going to set my size down around 10, but I'm just eyeing it up. So this is dependent on how big your images generally are. Now on the inset, I am going to inset it. And the reason is because right now the watermark is very close to the edge of the frame. And I don't like that. It's just not good design. And also if you were to have to trim your image or print it out, it's likely that that text is going to get cut off. So let's inset it horizontally by about four and then vertically by about two. So now my watermark is sitting up and to the right just slightly. And then under that I have the anchoring options. Do I want it anchored to the left of the image, which it is right now, or do I want it in the center or to the right? And this is really up to you. Now I find that for most of my stuff, having it in the bottom left is preferable because it's further away from faces. If I am uh, watermarking portraits or people, usually I don't have their faces in the bottom of the frame. So for my own purposes, I'm going to use bottom left. You can also rotate it if you want so that the watermark goes up the side of the image rather than just being aligned horizontally. But I'm actually just going to leave it the way it is for right now. I kind of like it. I'm going to save this watermark now as simple text watermark and create. Now we'll apply it in just a minute, but let's go ahead and go through the process of creating the graphic watermark. I'm going to go back to Lightroom, edit watermarks, and instead of text, I'm going to choose graphic and immediately Lightroom will bring up a dialog for you to select a watermark graphic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here to uh, my desktop and I'm going to grab a watermark that I previously created. If you're interested in seeing how I made this in Photoshop, there's another video that you can see and I will link to that in the show notes. But I'm going to select this PNG and bring it in to Lightroom. Now you'll notice that it automatically set it down in the bottom left. The text options are all grayed out because we're using a graphic, but I do still have watermark effects options. So I can change the opacity of this. I can change the size, just like we did with the text. I can change the inset, and I can change the anchoring. So I can anchor this center if I want, size it down, and now hit save, and I'll put simple, graphic watermark. All right, let's see how this looks now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an image and I'm going to export it with this watermark. And because I want to see how it looks on both horizontal and vertical images, I'm going to grab two different images. And I'm going to right click, choose export, go up to export. It's going to automatically have my default export settings from whatever I did last, which is fine. I'm not going to mess with those, but I am going to come down here to the area that says watermark and I'm going to hit check watermark. And I'm going to select the simple text watermark, the first one we did. And up here, I'm just going to make sure that I know where it's going. I'm going to export it to the desktop so I can find it easily. Hit export. You see the files are exporting here. Now let's go over to our desktop and intercept them and see how they look. Let me go here to desktop and 
here you go. That was our simple text watermark, and you can see it on both images, both the vertical and horizontal images. It's being sized proportionally for both images. That's good. That's what we wanted. I'm going to delete those and re-export the same two images with our graphic watermark. So right-click, hit Export. Go to your Export dialog. And then down here under Watermark, we're going to choose the simple graphic watermark we created and hit Export. Again, files are exporting. And we're going to go over here to the desktop and see how they look. So there we go. We have applied our graphic watermark to both of these images proportionally. And it's looking quite good. Now, if you want to know how to create the watermark in the first place, again, there's another video for that. Uh, but if you have any questions on this, please feel free to ask in the comments. If this is useful to you, please subscribe. Have a great day, and I'll see you back here again.